by their decisions. Oh, how do we make decisions? What does that process involve? And let's just talk about that. I'm Praj Nohara, and this is my weekly program, my channel. And if you enjoy my messages, my meditations, please like, comment, and subscribe. This is greatly appreciated. So today we're going to talk about something that is very fresh and raw for me right now. Sometimes we can hang out in life in a particular circumstance for so long that we forget that we might have a choice in it, that we can decide something different. We can just kind of become accustomed to navigating a situation or life in a particular way and not even consider the idea that something different is possible for us. So let me talk about how this is for me right now. Some of you know who have been listening to me for a while is that last year I fractured my leg in three different places. And this was really quite shocking for me because I'm a very abled bodied person. Thank you for that. You know, I've been quite active all through my life and I've practiced a lot of yoga and I've been a long distance professional swimmer and you know, walking on a pretty daily basis. So here I am, bed, you know, down and out on my bed for a few weeks before I was able to get around with crutches or a wheelchair. So I had the opportunity to really experience the world from a different vantage point. And I was really getting pretty buff in my upper arms again. But I do experience this world, but not as the experiencer, because I have daughters with disabilities who do not have fully abled bodies. So I have somewhat of an idea of what it's like to navigate different communities and locations and streets, sidewalks, all of these kinds of things in a wheelchair. But that's not real, well, it's, it's, this is all related. So my healing maybe was um, accelerated because my option to be in bed isn't really a long-term option. <laughs> it's not one I'm used to at all. So I was very fortunate to have help and to get on my feet again. But my body has never been quite right since that time. And um, I started to just accommodate, you know, like get accustomed to and find myself sitting differently or not taking on certain physical um, adventures or chores even or opportunities, you know, kind of like limiting myself because of the situation with my leg. Well, what it is, I have two screws in my knee. So my, uh, one of my twins, Abby, she said to me oh, last week, she said, mom, we should really get back into hot yoga. And it's something that we did together and my other daughter, Autumn, as well. In fact, we did it for so long when we were living in Grass Valley that we received the Yoga Family Award for showing up to yoga, you know, as a family. Now, Autumn lives somewhere else, but Abby and I have been practicing here where we live. So I was like, great idea. Let's do this. So we go and we um, show up to yoga. Now, the first class, and it's in a hot room, you know, 90 minutes 26 postures and two breathing exercises. Phenomenal practice, good for so many things. And it's not really hardcore, it's a very gentle um, uh, dialogue, so to speak, that the teacher takes you through. It's not really like boot camp, as some of the studios maybe have been thought to be. It's actually really quite kind and lovely. So I enjoy going there and smiling in my pool of sweat and feeling all parts of my body. So the first class was the hardest, but I was determined to keep going back. And today was my fourth class. But I even recognized on the first class that I have these screws on my knees and it really limits the motion in my knee. It's kind of like my knee feels like a hinge. It will only go so far and then it just like halts. It says, this is as far as we're going, almost like a cupboard door you know, that you open up and then it's like, ah, that's as far as we go. And uh, it feels very mechanical. 
in the sense that more is going to stretch around my knee doesn't feel like that's going to happen because there's these screws that are limiting the movement and they feel quite foreign to my body. So had I not go gone to the yoga class, maybe I would have shown up someplace else, which reminded me that I have these screws in my knees and that I actually can choose to have them taken out. You know, so I come into an environment and I'm reminded, you know what, your body has another option and my body wants the screws to be taken out. So this is, this is my lived experience right now, but in it, I have this trauma around medical proceedings, even the surgery for the knee. You know, let's go back to, um, I don't have a lot of hospital experience. I've been healthy most of my life. You know, I had a life as a addict for quite some years, but once I cleaned that up and got healthy, it doesn't mean that I haven't had emotional or mental challenge. Of course I have, but physically I tend to be in good shape. So um, when I had this proceeding, I remember, well, it, I had the, the uh, medical trauma with my daughters that received a C-section without informed consent. It was a proceeding that didn't have to happen. And I ended up with one pound babies and I've been nurturing them for 26 years now. So that's a whole nother story. And you can read about that in my book called Edge of Grace. Now it took me a long time to see even, to let myself see what went down on that weekend in the hospital and how I really was not listened to. I was, my decisions, my choices were not honored and I really was taken over by a medical protocol that didn't need to happen. So when I had this experience with my knee, I, I was told that it required surgery. I didn't get a second opinion. My knee was like blown up like a watermelon and something had to happen. But while I was there prior, I was asked to fill out all these papers. And then there was one form and it said all these check marks were optional. So I chose to not agree to having other people in the room. And so when I went into the surgery, one of the um, assistants, medical assistants said, oh, but you have to check this off. And I said, but it says it's optional. And they said, well, but you have to check it because we wanna have a uh, company in here that has parts, knee parts. And I said, but I'm not getting a re, I'm not having my knee restructured. I don't need parts. And um, then she said, and I'm already on the table, all ready to go. And she says, well, if you don't check here, even though it says optional, she didn't say that, I'm saying that to myself, says then you can't have the surgery. And I'm like, well, then it's not really optional, is it? I said, well, I wanna speak to the surgeon and find out why these other people need to be in the room to observe my knee surgery. And the next thing you know, the anesthesiologist injects the medication, the sedative into my body, I'm out and I'm under the knife. And I don't know anything that happened until I come to about an hour later. So that was not informed consent and it kind of left another lingering, kind of triggered that lingering uh, mistrust with what can happen in places where you don't have witnesses, you don't have advocacy, you're not given the information you need. And also you're, you're kind of on, a t on somebody else's schedule. Like, you know, we gotta get this done. And yeah, so I have that going on. So coming to make a decision, like when there's a big decision up, I've had people ask me many times, you know, I just don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. So often what I, you know, step back into myself and I have to just feel and feel and feel and ask what does my body want? And then just do the simple things first, you know, make the small decisions first. You know, just slow it all down, slow it all down so I can get a second opinion. I can get a third opinion. I can perhaps find a surgeon that is willing to have the conversation 
and have somebody there with me and be able to talk about these things openly and what my concerns are. Because, you know, medical professionals are just like you and me. I mean, you might even be one. We're all human. We have our flaws, our fears, our concerns, and our expertise and everything else. But I'm sure that there must be one available that is covered by my medical insurance who is willing to have a conversation with me to address whatever concerns I might have. And what added, what um, sedative would be used? I mean, I really want to just have something localized. I'd like to be awake and to watch. So it's like really kind of filling out, um, you know, what your options are, getting clear about what they are, gathering as much information as possible. This is what I'm telling myself. And really lean, like my body, as I listen to my body and I feel my body go through yoga and I feel the limitations and the postures that I'm not able to do anymore. And then I consider, well, wow, what does this mean for my body long-term? I'm gonna be creating some imbalances. You know, I'm gonna be limited. Maybe I'll have arthritis in my knee, you know, who knows? Not that I have a lot of fear about that, but you know, I'm kind of like building up the stakes, right? Like when it comes to your life, you know, the stakes get a bit higher, like, right? Like, how you get to use your body. You know, and if other people are dependent upon you, you know, when it's not just about you and your uh, householder and you have responsibility for other people in your family, whether it be uh, you know, siblings, children, partners, all those things, or your work, you know, and your income. It's like the stakes get a little bit higher when we think about, you know. What does that mean for our aliveness? Yeah, I mean, Adi Shanti speaks about high stakes in enlightenment, you know, where it's a high stakes game for the ego because the ego is continuously being invited to relax itself for ego relaxation to happen. And this is a good thing here too because that's the part where we see what is fear and what is real and what can I actually attend to? So I wanted to share that with you today. I don't have a, a lot of time because one of my daughters is actually quite sick right now, but I want to hop on because I'm committed to, to spending this time with you once a week. And that's, that's a decision that I have made, you know? So like, yeah, I'm doing it. I'm following up. So pat yourself on the back. I'm sure there's many decisions you have made even to kind of click onto this and listen to it, some really good decisions. And sometimes, you know, we have to kind of have this ego relaxation where we just kind of sink and listen into our bodies and feel the groundedness and the connection to the earth and maybe even say a prayer. But I don't know, like when we spend time and we're thoughtful and we're curious and we reflect. I don't know that we can make a bad decision, really. We learn whatever the decision is, we learn something from it. And if it loops around again, maybe it will loop around again until we are able to reap all of the learning from it, all of the gratitude, all of what life is bringing forward to teach us. You know, in this case for me, it's like life is up offering an opportunity again to resolve some trauma that might be lingering in my system. And how does that get resolved? And how do I honor my experience as valid? Yeah, like our experience is valid, but, but also, if there is a need, we have to find a way to move with that, like to find the middle way in that without sacrificing our value, oh, what's important to us without putting ourselves in danger. Yeah, whether it be a procedure, a procedure like this, a relationship, a job, what we put into our bodies. 
so many things. <clears throat> so I'm really happy to be here with you. Let's just take a moment to sit and kind of sink into this sense of feeling what is wanted in the body and what, you know, what brings joy, you know, like if there's something to me, like I sit in the yoga room and I love being there. And it's like, I can be there exhausted on the floor, sweating my ass off, you know, just like covered in sweat and have this amazing smile come through my whole body. Like this joy body is waking up again and feel light within the heaviness, within the weariness, within the fatigue, within the ache. Like that there's always this light and joy when we let ourselves really like relax the ego concerns. You know, that, that might compare like, oh, I'm not working hard enough or oh, you know, I'll never get to this place. You know, which isn't looking around outside and making a comparison based on what is seen on the outside, but simply feeling into what's happening here on the inside. What is wanted, what is valued, and really honoring and feeling that deep sinking into the body, into the ground of the Great Mother, how she holds us. And how we can attend to whatever might be triggered in us. And a trigger doesn't always have to be something jarring and negative, but it can be something like a splash of joy, of pleasure. And that's information for us. And the more information we let ourselves have, the more clarity I believe we have in the choices that we make. And when we practice, you know, one, one practice at a time, one moment at a time in this way, in a full embodiment of who we are, we really can't go wrong. We just can't go wrong because it's about you and you, your relationship with yourself and the rightness of you, the value of you the joy of you, the lightness of you in your body and where your deep soul medicine lives. So if you've been at the edge of making a decision or for, perhaps you've been in a place of forgetting that you have choice, I hope that what's just been shared with you is, is helpful. For whatever the next step in your journey might be, yeah, and some, sometimes and often we step back, it's the Zen backward step into ourselves, into this wide space of listening and feeling and sensing into our joy body, our light body, our being body, and ask the question, what is wanted? What is wanted more than anything else? And what are the stakes that I'm up against? Mm -hmm and remembering that when you listen in this way, you can't really go wrong, you can only learn. Life is all about learning. So thank you for tuning in and I will give you a full report whenever I get to the point of doing my research and clarifying who I want to work with on this. Yeah, because it's gonna be about a team effort. Yeah, so um, if you like my channel, my messages, like, subscribe, 
and I'll see you in another week. Take very good care of yourself and remember your joy. Bye for now. What brings you joy? That's the question. Honor that, savor it. Give yourself more of it.